Hello everyone and welcome to Prehistoric Kingdom Devlock uh, Analysis. I don't even know how to call that. But today there is a new Devlock that has been dropped and it's the number 34, which is quite late, right? You know, that's the first time I'm covering this on my channel. So before we jump into today's uh, Devlock, and in case you are only interested in the coverage of this Devlock, you can just jump to the dedicated point in the video, which is in the description. Um, if you are new to uh, this wonderful game or this upcoming game, I should say, stick with me. I'm gonna play the trailer in a few seconds, but before so, I'm just quickly giving you a little heads up of, of what we are talking about here because that is some really exciting stuff. I've been I've been following this game for a long time already. I really didn't have the time to cover it um, in a way that it deserves it, so I decided to not do it until I'm uh, well aware of the fact that I will keep on covering it, which will happen from now on. So, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom is settled out to be a game, uh, a park builder game for a, yeah, kind of Jurassic Park-ish uh, game, but it's it's more than just dinosaurs. It's also like uh, some cool ancient creator, uh, like extinct creatures, like the mammoth or uh, the saber tooth, and you know all these kind of cool creatures as well. There are a bunch of animals already confirmed for the beta, which is going to drop this year. But um, yeah, we are now sitting here to to read an update on this. If you want to know more about actually the game before jumping into it, I highly recommend to check out the website. They also have a dedicated Discord in which you can find a lot of crazy people. I tell you in a positive way, but these people seem to be even more crazy than the planet communities in terms of analyzing screenshots and, and going deep into stuff actually, uh, which is totally crazy. I just don't have the time to do it the same way, but in case you guys are interested, highly uh, recommend going there. Um, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff and this game is actually, um, it almost looks like being the perfect marriage between Jurassic World Evolution and Planet Zoo, if you ask me. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit more focused on the management side of things, uh, while keeping the same freedom that a planet game offers with like the piece by piece building um, and also some very cool mechanisms like uh, scaling of objects for example is one of those things I want to highlight. Um, very cool, very nice looking uh, foliage uh, which is also part of the devlog today. Um, but yeah, so in case you're interested, watch the trailer now and then we're going to talk about the devlog. So see you after the trailer. <laughs> What if time could be rewritten? What if we could bring back the wondrous creatures extinction left behind? What if you could run your own prehistoric kingdom? Through the power of genetic technology, biological marvels from a bygone era roam the Earth once more, providing an opportunity to protect, preserve and nurture the ancient past. But it's not just the animals that are looked after. State-of-the-art facilities keep the guests entertained and satisfied throughout their visit to the park. This place is a sanctuary for our planet's rich history, with extinct species of all shapes and sizes. And of course, you can also find some of the cute ones. It reminds me of mine back home. It's crucial we give these beautiful creatures the respect and care they need. Or else we might be the ones facing extinction. All right, I hope you guys are as excited for the game as I am. And we are in here for the devlog number 34, as we said. 
it's the December devlog, um, which is a little bit later, and I think we can we can actually um, forgive the devs uh, to you know be a bit on a late side this time, which I guess is totally fine because of holiday season and stuff like that. Um, the devs look are pretty cool because they always give a very nice insight of where they're standing. So you can see this is the devlog development report from December 2020. Um, they are still working on the pre-alpha. I haven't been actually backing this game, uh, to be honest. I fo I just forgot it to just bl bluntly honest. I followed it for so long and I just forgot uh, with all the other stuff I had to do. So unfortunately, I don't have access to the alpha. Um, but I've seen some stuff from other cool creators out there who have covered it. Um, so really exciting stuff. You can see in the programming department, they are working on the mini exhibits, which is partly, well, a big part of today's devlog, um, on the animal behavior, the power management, which has been part of the last devlog, so very cool power management aspect, the user interface, which we're going to look in uh, to some of the screenshots, the camera movement, which is a rework and design uh, design of it, which is also pretty nice. Um, there are a lot of cool camera controls um, and a guest system pathfinding. I don't need to talk about how important pathfinding and pathing is. You know, I feel the pain already in myself from the Planet Zoo stuff and so on, you know. Um, in the art development, they are working on the animal assets and I love the fact you can see some, uh, you know, eggs cracking over here. Um, that's something, you know, to look into. We have the environment assets and foliage we are going to see further down into the, the devlog today. Um, guest assets like clothing options and stuff, very cool stuff. Animations, um, building assets, uh, which goes into piece by piece building, UI and UX uh, design, which goes hand in hand with the user interface. And in the audio implementation, you can see, and always they have these kind of little um, heart icons, which are going to show which is the most important stuff they are really putting their heart and effort in, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, let's go into the highlights. And we are starting with the mini aviary. And I want to highlight this one especially. Um, I, I can okay, click that's a little bit uh, bigger so we can have a better look at it. Um, you can see the mini predators living in here and before we go everything into detail this thing acts basically like a small exhibit in Planet Zoo just being way bigger and we are going to get a very nice addition what Planet Zoo doesn't offer but I hope in the future I might add but there is something very cool about this and you can see they're also having some enrichment items you can add in later on which your animals will interact with it. So they will have like a predefined path they are flying, but then they will kind of, you know, sit down and interact with the object. So it's not only adding kind of a decorative item, it's basically adding also animations and news points to fly to. So you can basically, you know, imagine this being like a, a full set of pre preset um, points where they do fly at. Um, and so you add just a few more loops of animations, which is pretty cool. Um, so in here, you can see this is managing the welfare of the animals. And I want to stick to this image uh, over here quite a bit more, because I assume that you guys haven't seen this um, as much in case you are looking at the first time. Um, so you can see there's a lot of familiar stuff, you know, it's a park management game, so it's, it's basically what you expect to have. I love the whole art style, I love how they developed uh, the UI, which has changed quite a few times uh, during the development, but I like it. It's pretty clean, it's pretty well organized, um, loads of icons uh, seem very familiar because they're well known. Um, and you can actually see uh, loads of stuff that you are also familiar with from Planet Zoo. You've got the notifications, uh, kind of layers, and um, basically um, this over here is like the overlays and some help and a dictionary. And there's like a worldwide web where you can... It's, a, it's like a world map where you go for the uh, excavation. This is what you have to do, like in uh, our wonderful game Jurassic World Evolution as well. And you can see all the other stuff that is very familiar. But over here is where the fun stuff happens. Um, you've got like uh, the habitat itself. You can see um, that the temperature is not in the right uh, condition right now. It's at 0%. The habitat in general is at 0% because you can see it's just basically blank. You know, there's nothing happening in here. So it's not a good state. Um, you have to fill in stuff. The cleanliness is here. Um, on all this kind of stuff is something very familiar. You can see over here there are some other options and tabs you can go into. Financial report, customization of course, habitat itself um, and about the animals in there and hatching um, just for what you have excavated as well. And then you've got the camera options to go in. Um, so pretty cool stuff and um, very interesting how they laid it out. And this building over here also looks super nice, super modern, super sleek. And as I said, there's a lot of piece by piece building as well in this game. So you can also put these 
buildings down as a full, let's say, blueprint, but you can also put down stuff on your own, like here, um, single branches and items, pretty cool stuff. And I'm sorry if you guys are already very familiar with it, I'm trying to make this video um, suitable for everyone. So for those who are very much uh, in here already and know what's going on, and for those who are new, um, and these are, as you can see, these uh, enrichment items, as I've just talked about, you can see it's the avian house where they can fly in and the avian feeder tower, which is pretty nice. And all here, uh, in here, you can see changing the landscape, you have different decorative options. So this is one option over here, this is another option, and that's just another option, um, which I like a lot because this gives you a bit of freedom of creation of different areas. It's not like that you put down single things but i think this is this is again if you compare that to the small exhibits in uh, planet zoo it works a similar way only that you get a bit more of control over what you do even though it's prefab you still have the control to do some other stuff speaking of control there's one thing that everyone has asked for um since the very beginning and modders have actually done it um you know um <laughs> cuff cuff <laughs> this is basically the option to disable or basically hide the um shell around it, which technically doesn't change the behavior of the animals they will just keep flying from one point to the other but it almost seems like as if it's in the free world and you can basically add all your stuff from around you can also what they said which is pretty awesome as well you can basically get rid of all the stuff that is in here because scrolling up again you can see you can use the blank shell basically and add in your own stuff but then you have to remember that they still do fly to their own prefab points actually um, i'm not going to read every single bit in here um, you can you can just uh, read it yourself. I will you know embed this in the in the description down below. I will try to just showcase what's going on. Also, can we just talk about how nice that looks at night, like with the lighting and stuff? Oof, this looks so good. Um, then we have over here uh, progression unlocking animals. Um, this is also kind of cool. This is the excavation map um, as we have uh, over here, and this looks obviously pretty familiar to what you can expect. Um, in a game like that, you know, you have uh, your teams that you put into the Hell Creek formation, for example, and they are going over here, as you can see, for the Edmontosaurus and the Triceratops, as well as the Tyrannosaurus. Um, I think it's actually also um, pretty accurate of, of where the animals really live. Uh, well, live is, is the wrong wording. Where they basically are going to be found in the real world, because, you know, where they have been living um, in their dedicated, um, yeah, just... Um, times of where they have lived um, in our history. So that's kind of cool. And then we have like another picture over here. We can see the progress uh, in here. I can see how many percent uh, is the species uh, competition and stuff. This is very familiar to what you know. One thing that is basically pretty nice as well is the different patterns that you do unlock while doing so. I like the fact that it is, you know, actually that it is within this um, excavation process and not as in Jurassic World Evolution and in a different way where you unlock it via a different type of unlocking options because I think it just belongs together so I like this. Also you get a nice glimpse of the animals. This is the Edmontosaurus, this is the Triceratops and this is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I want to add to that, maybe you guys have seen it or not, but there are two different versions of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's one going to be with scales and the other one with feathers, which is also pretty rad, pretty cool for like the, you know, let's say the more monster friendly persons out there. And obviously also for the persons who like a bit more scientific, um, accuracy, I want to say. Um, anyhow, so let's go further into foliage showcasing because that's what stuff is. And if Mike is watching, that, that that's your part, Mike. This is going to be uh, interesting. So also scrubland, temperate wetland received a handful of flora each uh, in December, which is great. Um, they are not uh, scheduled for full competition quite yet, but they wanted to show us a little bit of these images. And oh my god, look at that. We have a lot of cool and familiar looking stuff. Also, I love the rocks. Um, I'm not fully aware of what you can all scale, but pretty much a lot of pieces in this game will be scalable. I'm quite sure the rocks are, so this is also fun stuff to play with. Making rocks bigger and smaller um, will help you create more natural looking environments pretty easily. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can see a nice little palm tree over here. Um, we have a lot of cool trees over here, some, ba uh, some bamboo over here. This looks to be the Asian fountain bamboo, I guess it is. Um, Anyways, some cool stuff, a birch tree as well. Um, then we have these little flowers in here and we've got some other cool, more swampy looking trees. I have no idea how the trees are all called, but they're looking kind of nice. And we also have some revamped plants over here as well. 
Um, so we have the aforement uh, aforementioned um, palms, uh, Samenea and Scavola, um, which is kind of cool as well. You can see a lot of this stuff working together here in the build. And there you can see our feather friend, uh, Rexy. So this is, again, um, this is one of the T-Rex uh, versions with the feathers um, to be, again, a bit more scientifically accurate. However, I think I love this environment because that goes a little bit back to the original Jurassic Park vibes in... Um, in um, the Lost World, which I love. It's just looking very cool with all these uh, pine trees and stuff. Really cool stuff. But yeah, um, then we have something else over here. There is a animal showcase as well. It's fluffy, but it's not a normal mammal. This is a P. Point uh, Perotorum, our highly speculative old species for uh, Pachyrhinosaurus. I hope I said that somewhat correctly. Um, I'm, I'm going to be terrible at the names, okay? So please forgive me with that. I'm going to be terrible. This is why I'm uploading this video at midnight, so that no one is actually able to listen to what I'm saying all wrong over here. But uh, we've seen this already in uh, the screenshot around Christmas, which is pretty nice, like with the Aurora. So we also get like a glimpse of the Aurora in the back. And we have this wonderful picture over here. Look at that. This is just, I, I love the models. It's really, really cool. I love the feather shader. It's looking good as well. Just in general, this game looks very promising. I don't want to get too excited, but since I've been following the development for quite a long time, I've seen some builds, I've seen some gameplay, I, I'm i very much hyped for it. I'm really, really hyped for it. Um, so you can see there's also like a little bit of an update they are showing us. So uh, you can see this is a screenshot from April 2020. And that's one from December 2020, so they've come a long way in terms of foliage and how overgrown it looks and just in general um, lighting and stuff seems to be a lot improved. Um, so it's pretty cool and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really... I'm really, really glad to finally cover this on the channel. There's a lot of stuff coming and I'm I'm just going into this one over here. This is a bit of a timing info. So as the development update, we are aiming to release alpha at the end of Q1 this year, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm really looking into, I don't know if I can get into it or not. Who knows, but I really want to get my hooves on it. Um, so highest tier backers and selected testers will be able to get their hands on early versions of the build by February, with the closed alpha releasing falling soon thereafter. In terms of our general release timeline, beta is expected to happen in Q2, which then I'm definitely going to play um, ahead of the game's release into early access. Uh, depending on uh, community feedback during the beta, we might choose to push things back by a few weeks so new players can get a more uh, optimal experience, but that's obviously not something we can say for certain yet. Of course not but because that's like a very nice progress with the community so we do fully understand why things are pushed and this is what we've been talking about in the past uh, with Planet Zoo for example as well but we, we all understand that's this kind of a different um, a different point at where the dev studio is here in comparison to Frontier for example so you know I just want to I, I don't want to be biased whatsoever I just say how it is I like how they approach it it's really nice it's a very close uh, communication and a good of a good banter as well in the discord so that's kind of cool but yeah until there's more information assume at uh, the end of Q2 for early access release which means about June um, or early July who knows? Looking at uh, Early Access launch features, the only thing that's uh, changed since we last spoke about it is the uncertainty of staff management. As developers, we'd be more comfortable moving them to a dedicated kind of where they are. Focus instead of a single bare bones staff member at launch, but as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. That's all for now, but we'll have more alpha and release information available in the next development update, which is going to be January. Since I've got birthday, the devs know, of course, that they will do make something really great for January, of course. I'm also not going to scrap the community creations because people are pretty dang good at drawing and stuff, it seems. So Dino Art has created that wonderful um, uh, drawing, actually, um, of our new uh, friend over here and then we have some other cool stuff over here like oh my god I just like this art style as well and then we have yet another one for the Christmas days also by Dino DJ very cool stuff guys I highly recommend looking into this it's a very interesting and a very exciting game to come um, you can be sure that I'm covering from now on the infos on this channel I won't be promising you that it will be every single time the same as today like very much after the release of the devlog um, I just promised to do it today to myself because I was so much following it um, however I really hope that in the coming weeks we can focus a bit more on this game and uh, I'm trying also to speak to some people who have 
played it already, maybe I can get some footage to talk to you because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have you heard already of the game? Are you excited as well? Maybe it's the first time you've heard of it. Um, if so, let me know in the comments down below if you're excited as well, if this seems to be interesting for you. But now I wish you a good night for those of you in Europe and whoever is watching in the morning or in the day, have a good day ahead. And I talk to you in the next one. Most of all, guys, stay safe and goodbye.